Next we're going to be doing some special tests for the biceps brachii tendon. Uh, uh, more specifically, this will go through the, the long, long head of the, the biceps, so um, it'll go through the bicipital groove up here, um, up on the top of her shoulder. Uh, first one that we're going to be doing is going to be called the Jurgensen test. So for this one, she's going to uh, flex her elbow to 90 degrees. And then uh, we can either stabilize her here. What she's basically going to do, she's going to be flexing and externally rotating uh, while we're doing that in resistance. Um, and we can, uh, uh, again, if we wanted to, we can uh, palpate that if she keeps her arm in that position. Uh, we can see if there's any tenderness over the groove. Um, uh, or if, um, if we needed to apply our hand here to keep it, that's fine too. We can just ask to see if there was any pain up there. So for a positive test for the Jurgensen's test. Uh, next we're going to do a speed test, speeds test. And for this one the arm is uh, extended uh, zero degrees. And what she's going to be doing is um, she's going to be going into shoulder flexion. And I'm going to apply my resistance against that. Um, as she goes through that. And again, if I needed to, I can palpate the bicipital groove, but again, the, the pain would be right there at the um, biceps um, brachii uh, tendon. The third one is called the Ludington's test. And for this one, uh, it's typically done bilaterally. Uh, once you can find the bicipital groove on the injured side, and next you're gonna ask the patient to uh, place both hands um, on top of her head. Um, folding your um, fingers like so. Um, and then she's at, then in this position, then she can uh, push down on the top of her head. And again, kind of con contracting the biceps uh, brachii. And then while you're palpating it, the groove, then the pain would be over there for a positive test. And those are the th three tests for the biceps. Next, we're gonna do some special tests for thoracic outlet syndrome. First one that we're going to be doing is called the Adsense test. And for this one, the patient is going to uh, abduct the shoulder uh, uh, about 30 degrees. And then she's going to uh, extend with the thumb down. Uh, the head is going to start out uh, towards the involved side. And then uh, I'm going to palpate the radial pulse while I stabilize the back of the scapula. And then I'm going to uh, externally rotate uh, and extend the um, arm while I'm palpating it. During this whole time, I'm looking for a diminished pulse, and she's going to. Uh, and then um, the last thing that uh, she's going to do is she is with her head, is she is going to extend the head and rotate it towards the involved side. Again, I'm checking the pulse. And then the last thing that she's going to do is she's going to hold her breath. Take a deep breath and hold it. Go ahead. <laughs> and then again, I would check to see if there's a diminished pulse. Um, if, any, if she does have a diminished pulse, it could be an occlusion subclavian artery uh, between the, the uh, anterior and middle uh, scalenes muscles. The next test that we're going to do is called the Allen test. The, for the Allen's test, she's, again, she can be sitting. Uh, we're going to uh, flex the elbow uh, 90 degrees. We're going to abduct and uh, externally uh, rotate. Again, palpating the uh, radial pulse here at the wrist. And, it, and again, we're looking for any type of diminished pulse. Uh, once we're in this position, then I'm going to, um, again, stabilizing the posterior scapula. Now we're going to ask the patient to rotate the head to the opposite side. Okay? And again, we're checking the pulse to see if there's any, any changes um, in any of these positions. And that would be an injury to the pectoralis. Uh, decreased pulse is caused by the pectoralis uh, minor muscle is, compressed, uh, is compressing the neurovascular uh, bundle. The next one that we're going to be doing is called the military brace test, and uh, it's also called the Edens, Edens test. Uh, for this one, we can either have her stand or sit. Uh, the head is facing forward. Um, the athletic trainer 
our therapist will stand posteriorly, again palpating uh, the patient's uh, pulse. Um, and what she is going to do, she's going to uh, abduct the shoulder about 30 degrees, and then we're going to extend or hyper uh, hyper extend uh, while we're feeling for any, um, and then she's also going to hyper extend her neck. And then again, we're feeling at all of those positions. We're feeling for a, a diminished pulse. Um, and then uh, lastly, we can also ask her to uh, retract her uh, shoulders a little bit more in a, into a military position. Again, any positive uh, diminished pulse would be an indication for a thoracic outlet syndrome. And then the last one that we're going to do is called the Roos test. Um, and for this test, the patient's going to sit or stand with both shoulders um, abducted to 90 degrees. She also has uh, 90 degrees uh, elbow flexion. And um, then she's going to uh, ask the patient to rapidly open and close her, her uh, fingers, kind of like the, the chicken dance bird. She's going to do this um, for both hands for about three minutes. Okay, and then at the end of the, if she is unable to maintain this position, she, she may have decreased motor um, function to the hand and or less sensation to the, sensations to the uh, upper extremities, uh, which would be an indication for a thoracic outlet syndrome, which is secondary to any neurovascular compression.